Welcome to Amma Views and News, another video for you. Firstly, Adidaro, some pictures are being shared by pro-government news sources. The pictures could be potential uh, visual confirmation, potential visual confirmation that Adidaro is under ENDF control, EDF control. Uh, secondly, uh, Yesterday, we reported uh, an attack in Shere city in which some aid agency staff members were injured. Today, the aid organization confirmed the attack and one aid worker has been killed. The organization has confirmed the death of one of its staff in Shere in yesterday's attack. Uh, thirdly, Eritrea today officially issued a statement in response to some earlier statements from EU and US. In the past uh, one week or so, uh, we have seen that EU first spoke saying that Eritrea was a hindrance to uh, peaceful solution to Ethiopian conflict, then six uh, countries issued a joint statement again, accused Eritrea of playing uh, a negative role in Ethiopian uh, conflict. Today, Eritrean embassy in US released a statement addressing EU and US statements. Lastly, good news for uh, Somalia. Let's start this uh, bulletin with this good news because uh, people of Somalia uh, are facing several challenges. Drought going on for months. Uh, ongoing offensive against Al-Shabaab. Government officials laying down their lives. One third of Somalia under Al-Shabaab. Thirdly, political wranglings. Political elite keeps on fighting among themselves. People suffer. Somalia, uh, uh, people do not have a uh, lot of things to cheer about these days. A good news for the people of Somalia that their under-17 soccer team has won uh, East and Central Africa final in Addis Ababa. Somalia's team defeated South Sudan's team. Uh, Somalia's team scored three goals, South Sudan won. Congratulations to the people of Somalia. Now, under-17 football team of Somalia will be participating in next year's African Cup of Nations for the first time. So, it's an achievement for soccer team in Somalia, for the people of Somalia, something to share about. And... Uh, videos, pictures are being shared showing people celebrating in Mogadishu. Uh, we don't see uh, such festivities in uh, Somalia, especially in recent days. We haven't seen that. So that is why congratulations to the people of Somalia. Now some new stories for you. First one is from Edi Daro. Some pictures are being shared which could be potential visual confirmation that ENDF and EDF are in the Dairo. The town situated to the north of uh, Shire. Uh, when ENDF, uh, Amhara forces and EDF captured Edi Hagre, uh, First, they shared some pictures from Adi Hagre showing only Adi Hagre's banks. And in Shiraro as well, they shared some pictures uh, showing Adi Hagre's uh, and Shiraro's main places. Later, they shared pictures of soldiers as well. ENDF Amhara soldiers were seen standing in front of banks and other uh, main buildings in Shiraro in Adi Hagre. Now, picture is being shared from Edi Daro, showing commercial bank of Edi Daro. Uh, you can see the picture on your screen. It is being shared by some pro-government uh, news sources. In coming hours, reportedly, some pictures with uh, government soldiers from Edi Daro are going to be shared. 
this could be potential visual confirmation that uh, ENDF and EDF uh, are in Adidaro. If Shire is under attack, uh, if artillery strikes are ongoing on Shire uh, on daily basis, it's very clear that uh, EDF, ENDF are very close to Shire city. Uh, thirdly, viewers, uh, yesterday we reported that uh, some uh, strikes were conducted on Shire city in which uh, aid workers were injured. International uh, uh, Committee uh, of uh, International Relief Committee, which is uh, an INGO, yesterday said that uh, its staff members were injured in an attack on Shire. And today, IRC in a statement confirmed the death of one of its staff members who was injured in yesterday's attack and he died later. Uh, another one is injured. So, two members of IRC, International Relief Committee, were targeted in yesterday's attack. IRC said it was an attack. It did not say it was an a strike, don't strike or shelling. It just said in yesterday's attack. Could be shelling it means then. So two IRC members were injured, one has died. Two other civilians died too, IRC confirmed and some civilians injured too. So, aid and when these IRC members were injured, when they were hit, they were distributing aid to women and children in Shire city. That's very unfortunate, viewers, that those aid workers who are risking their lives to help the people who are in need of food in Tegarai uh, are becoming the victims of this war. All sides must protect the lives of these aid workers. Otherwise, who will provide food aid to the people in Tagarai, in parts of uh, uh, Amhara, border areas, afar to Somali region as well. But uh, in this conflict, we have seen utter disregard for the lives, for the reputation of aid agencies. They were made controversial mainly by Ethiopian government and sometimes by Tegra regional government as well. Three uh, of uh, uh, Doctors Without Borders, uh, INGO, were killed in uh, Tegrai last year and now one killed in Shira. Lastly, was Eretia today responded to two statements issued by EU. And six countries, uh, US and five other countries, a few days ago. In the two statements, uh, the two uh, statements uh, accused Eretia that Eretia was playing a destabilizing role in the Horn of Africa and Eretian forces must withdraw to their borders. Eretia today addressed. So, this is first official statement from Eretian government. It was issued by Eritrean Embassy in the US. First official Eritrean statement about ongoing war in northern Ethiopia. Eritrean Embassy in the US says that the war in November 2020 was started by Tigray forces. Around 250,000 Tigray fighters attacked a northern command basis in, of ENDF in Tigray. Purpose was to capture ENDF weaponry. Around 80% of ENDF weapons were in Tigray back then. Purpose was to capture all weapons and then to topple the government. And then this, this first offensive failed. Uh, and then came second offensive in July and third one in August this year. Eretia says that uh, TPLF is the main destabilizing group in the Horn of Africa and uh, EU, US are its backers. They supported TPLF when TPLF uh, 
waged war on Eritrea for two years in 1998, when TPLF expelled 75,000 Eritreans from Ethiopia and confiscated their properties, EU, US backed TPLF, and when uh, TPLF violated and uh, refused to acknowledge the agreements signed between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Back then, EU, US were backing uh, TPLF led government in Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. So, the embassy says that uh, EU, US cannot take high moral ground because they sided with TPLF when TPLF. Uh, committed atrocities against Eritreans. And now EU, US, they want to resuscitate TPLF uh, by accusing Eritrea of uh, promoting instability in the Horn of Africa. So, uh, it, it means that Eritrea has rejected all the allegations. Uh, it is not giving in to US, EU pressure. Uh, it is not ready to disassociate from this conflict. Uh, EU US uh, pressure upon ERT is not going to work. It can only work on Ethiopia. Obviously, uh, TPLF denies, Tegarari government uh, denies all these allegations leveled by uh, Eritrean embassy in its uh, statement. Uh, Tegarari the regional government says that uh, Ethiopian and Eritrean governments launched offensive on Tigray in November 2020. Uh, one point which I want to make about the statement is that earlier Eritrean position was that uh, by attacking Northern Command in November 2020, uh, TPLF wanted to attack Eritrea. It wanted to topple Addis Ababa uh, government, uh, government in Addis Ababa, federal government of Ethiopia, and then to topple government in Eritrea. But in this statement, there is no mention of uh, alleged TPLF intention to topple Isaias Evoki's government in Eritrea. Question is, if TPLF was not interested in toppling Isaias Evoki's government uh, in 2020, why were Eritrean forces involved in the war in November 2020? This statement only mentions alleged TPLF intention to topple government in Addis Ababa, not in Asmara. Uh, uh, it's a, a safe conclusion to make that uh, Eritrea is seeing some chance uh, in this conflict that it can strike a decisive blow to TPLF, which is uh, arch rival of Isaias. Okay, that is why no signs of any de-escalation on the part of Eritrean government. Only pressure on Ethiopian government can work to a limited extent. Pressure from EU, US, keeping in view the dire economic crisis in Ethiopia. Thank you for watching.